be talking about Spotlight, which are, is our application that we've built. Uh, we're using machine learning and natural language processing um, to combat human trafficking, specifically sex trafficking. And don't worry, we've sanitized all of this, so you're, you're not going to see things that you shouldn't be seeing. But it's an interesting problem to address with technology. And before we get started, I'll share a little bit about who we are. Um, our nonprofit organization is called Thorn. And our sole purpose is to drive technical innovation to fight the sexual exploitation of children. So we work with technology organizations, for example, Amazon, Facebook, Twilio, Instagram. Um, we also work with law enforcement and other non-government organizations. We try and make online environments a hostile place um, if they are sharing child sexual abuse material, as an example. So we'll work with some of our technology organizations to look at what their terms and conditions are. They have child safety protection teams, so we work with them to try and understand what is that ecosystem? Are there any things that we can do to help identify? We also conduct our own research. Um, sextortion um, is another one that we've recently, if you go on our website, you can download the paper on sextortion, but we provide that information and that studies back to our tech partners so they can look for patterns of grooming. Um, and then we also want to deter predatory behavior. So when we find out that people are actually trying to search for child sexual abuse material online, we have a deterrence program where we're trying to get them connected to services and help. So there's a variety of things that we do. Um, we're going to talk about one of the applications that we have right now, which is called Spotlight, and why it was created. So we conducted a survivor uh, study in 2012. What we found out was that 75% of the juveniles that had been sex trafficked um, were bought or sold online. So we knew at that point that there was some type of digital footprint that was out there. We also know in the United States alone, there's more than 200,000 sex classified ads um, posted on a daily basis. The other thing that we know from law enforcement, if um, I don't know if any of you guys have worked in law enforcement or with law enforcement, is that they have a lot of different things to do. So they might be working on a, a burglary, as an example. There aren't a lot of teams that actually focus just solely on sex trafficking. And if you think about this massive amount of data in your little town or your little area, are you really going to be able to focus your time, effort, and energy in going on one of these classified sites and really trying to investigate? And what we found is they don't have the time to do that. And it's really an impossible feat, given as much data edited as, as there is. So what we wanted to do was to provide um, law enforcement with a tool um, to be able to provide leads about suspected human trafficking networks in order to be able to identify victims and get them connected to resources. And that's why we created our application Spotlight. And so what Spotlight is, um, we worked with our partner, Digital Reasoning. Um, it's a cognitive computing platform, and we're also using natural language processing. But we're ingesting ads on a daily basis um, across the United States, and we're showing law enforcement the relationships between those ads. <clears throat> and we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing and the types of tools that we're able to provide for law enforcement. So this graph gives you an example. There's a variety of different sites that we have listed up here. So um, are you guys familiar with Backpage.com? You can buy and sell a lot of different things on there, but there's also sex classifieds. It's probably, it is probably the largest provider. You'll see it's the top line up there. Um, we're also collecting ads from, um, and comments from John Boards, a variety of different places. What you see this, this purple spike is, I don't know if you guys heard, but the CEO of Backpage.com got arrested probably about two or three weeks ago. There's a California statute that says if you profit off of um, sexual exploitation that you can be arrested. And previously you used to be able to, you had to pay for your ads on Backpage. Now you don't have to pay. So these charges are from a long time ago. But you can see all the comments on the John boards because they're worried about where the traffic is actually going to wind up going, which is kind of an interesting piece. So what is the data that we're looking at? So we're ingesting probably close to about 200,000 ads on a daily basis. Um, and you can see, I know this is probably a little bit of a, an eye chart, um, but um, you're, you're going to see information about the author, the body, the city. Um, so we have structured data, and then we also have unstructured data. So some of the unstructured data that we're looking at are things like the actual 
posting, right? So the information about what they're actually selling. Um, there's also freeform information. So there's two types of locations. One is the location that you have to select from a drop-down field on one of these sites. And then the other is a freeform field. You'll notice in this one it says, um, I think it says the strip. Yeah, so reported location, that's a freeform field. It says Las Vegas Strip. Um, so at, we'll walk through kind of what we're doing with that, but it gives you a sense of the type of information. The other information that we're also processing are images. So we wanted to give you a sense of, of how we're actually ingesting and processing this. So we do have a, a third party provider who's actually collecting this information from open forum sites. Um, and then we're taking and we're splitting up um, the photos and the forums into two different S3 buckets. Um, we're listening for traffic and then we're, we're queuing it off. Data Jetway is our transformation layer. And then uh, it's, DR stands for digital reasoning XML, and then we're processing with core analytics. So some of the core analytics, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, um, we're using our natural language processing, so we're doing phone decoding, and I'll show you that. Um, we're also using language flags, and I'll talk about that as well to understand, is somebody under the control of a pimp? Um, and then we're also doing our image processing, which I'll also share about that. And then we move more for um, global analytics, where we're looking at the networks. Um, if somebody has been trafficked across state lines, which we'd call the interstate flag. And then also our alerting mechanisms. We allow law enforcement to get alerted on particular um, criteria that they're, they're utilizing. Um, elastic search um, is really more of where our persistent data is being stored. Um, and then we've got a web API, which law enforcement is able to actually access the application. So if you can think about it as basically, it's law enforcement's search tool um, in investigating human trafficking. This is even probably harder to read, uh, but it, it goes through the same process. Um, we've got our load balancer. Um, and then as far as what's stored in, in SQL is primarily, again, our alerts um, and what law enforcement actually saves as far as their, their criteria that they want to look at. So I wanted to talk through um, kind of the deconstruction of a sex trafficking ad. Um, again, we've sanitized a lot of this, so hopefully none of this is offensive to you. Um, but what you have is anything that you would typically have in any regular type of posting, right, if you were going to sell a couch as an example. But you have your title, you have your tagline, you've got your ad copy details, and then you've got what we would call all of this metadata over here on the right-hand side. So you've got your post ID, um, when it was we actually collected that data. Um, and we don't have, in this case, we don't have a post date, uh, phone number, age if they've indicated age, and then you'll see multiple locations. The first location that you see is that database field from that primary source, and then any secondary tertiary locations are freeform fields and then an actual source. So if that ad is still up on that source page, we'll allow law enforcement to go and click on that. So one of the first things that we're doing from a natural language processing perspective is in, when you're investigating um, sex trafficking, one of the things that, that they will try and do is obfuscate their phone number. So you'll notice here that they'll spell out the words, they'll put spaces, they may even put emojis. Um, in between there. And what we're the fir one of the first things that we're doing is we're, we're stripping all of that out and we're standardizing and normalizing that. Why is that important? That's important because if law enforcement gets a tip that there's a runaway and they have a phone number, they have no idea what it looks like in its obfuscated form, right? They need to have it in a standardized format which they can input and search and then bring up the results within Spotlight. This is one of the most critical pieces of information in an investigation. Not to mention, this is also how you would communicate somebody if you were setting up an operation, right? So the other thing that we're doing is we're processing images. Um, and you'll notice that these images look slightly different, um, but they actually look somewhat similar. Um, some of the challenges is that they will crop images, they'll put um, watermarks on them, and they will come up as a different hash. We're hashing them with an MD5 hash. Um, but we do allow law enforcement to pivot off of an image and to be able to conduct a search based on that exact match search. Um, so they can actually click on an image and actually see what are the other ads that are um, showing up with that image. 
And the reason why that's important is that you guys may have had your phone numbers for a very long time, but in this space, they're using burner phone numbers, but they're often using the same or very similar pictures. And so if we can allow law enforcement to utilize that image search, then they can potentially find a new phone number that they might be utilizing in an investigation. So one of the other things that we're doing with the machine learning is we're flagging ads. So as we ingest these ads, one of the first things that we did before we developed Spotlight was sit down with law enforcement to understand how do you actually conduct your investigations? What are those risk profiles that you're looking for? Um, and so we came up with five of them. Um, one is massage. Um, and that's typically going to have information about specific hours, information about discrete parking. Um, control is going to be indicative that somebody is under the actual control of a pimp. Um, so they might have something like a pimp crown, and they may have particular things that they, you can or cannot do, for example, in a posting. An immature would have language in it. This is based on the true set that we have from law enforcement of 100 known juvenile cases, um, in which there might be some copy or some text, for example, that says playful, young, open-minded. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that if it's flagged as immature, um, that it necessarily is a juvenile, but it's indicative of the patterns and behaviors um, that they have seen. And then interstate is something that um, is primarily really just a hard and fast rule in the sense that we've seen a posting happening in one state, and now it's also happened in another. So they can see a pattern or a circuit that's happening with the trafficking that's occurring. Oh, I put control on there twice. <laughs> the one that's supposed to be on the very right is escort. Um, so escorts can indicate that there's, um, uh, they typically have more professional sounding postings. Um, they might actually be a licensed escort agency in a particular location. Um, but again, what this allows law enforcement to do, depending upon what type of investigation or what type of profile that they're looking at, it allows them to actually build their search criteria and put filters in there, right? Again, our mission is really from the juvenile perspective, so if they want, they can indicate that I want the immature flag in my particular location, and I can even indicate specific keywords. For example, two girls special is something that is somewhat indicative of minors, or something, for example, in an event new to town. Um, so they have all these different um, aspects at their, at their disposal. We weren't really able to show you a lot in the application just because of the explicit nature of what we're doing, so I blocked out some things. Um, but what you're seeing is our ability to map through space and time related ads to an original ad. So you'll notice there's a map on the right-hand side. There's these red dots with um, numbers around them, and that's indicating the frequency of ads that are associated in those particular locations. So again, it allows law enforcement to really understand what's happening. And again, when you think about jurisdictions and who's uh, working on a particular case, this is really helpful. It's also helpful from a prosecution perspective. Um, so they can kind of understand what the full span of this look actually looks like. This next slide uh, demonstrates our ability to show the intelligence that we have. So again, one of the, the challenges that law enforcement has is it's a massive amount of data. They don't know what they don't know. And I'll show you a picture of how investigators were doing sex trafficking investigations before the use of Spotlight, and it's, it's jaw-dropping when you're working in a technology space. But what we're trying to do with what we call our network graph is show the relationship between the data elements that we have. In this particular graph, at the center, you're going to see a phone number, and then you see the post IDs that are circuiting around it, and then you also see in gold, then you see the numbers. So that's the frequency of that pattern of that phone number and that post ID. Post IDs are reused, um, and so are phone numbers. Um, and then we can step it out based on the number of relationships. And again, this can help law enforcement uncover new phone numbers um, that they didn't previously know existed in a particular case. One of the other things that um, we're working on is, is going mobile. Um, you can think about this if you're law enforcement, if you have a particular operation and you're working on a case, um, the first, one of the first things you do is you kind of look at all these profiles. Who is it that I want to arrange a date with um, to try and get in and really understand what is happening? Um, and so being able to access it via mobile um, is really critical. Um, we allow law enforcement to create alerts, which is what you see on the very right-hand side. Um, so you can create an alert based on particular parameters that are within a posting. 
searching. So an example might be for a particular phone number. Um, and then you will get an email notification anytime that posting a new posting comes into play with that particular phone number. And that's been a huge time saving for law enforcement. One of the other things that we found out after we had deployed um, Spotlight that law enforcement really likes to utilize Spotlight for is that these ads actually are falling down anywhere between, it can be an hour after they're posted or six days. And so their evidence is basically deteriorating. We've had Spotlight up since October of 2014, and it really enables them to understand how long somebody has been trafficked and the full scope of, of that actual trafficking that's occurring. Which brings me to my next slide, which is really the data assets. Um, in this world of investigating sex trafficking, um, the data is changing constantly, right? There are different phone numbers, there's different post IDs, um, there's different photos. Um, again, we're ingesting probably more than 150,000 ads a day. We have over 65 million ads in Spotlight. We've been up since October of 2014. and uh, We have over 400 million images in Spotlight. That's not deduped, so just <laughs> want to clarify that. That's another challenge we have. So to give you a sense, um, we have over 3,200 law enforcement that are utilizing Spotlight. We're in all 50 states, including um, DC as well. We'll be expanding into Canada the end of this year. Uh, we have over 850 federal, state, and local agencies that are utilizing Spotlight. And we are a nonprofit, and because we are mission-driven, we do provide this application free to law enforcement. And to get a sense of the type of impact that Spotlight has had, um, this is based on the last 12 months, based on our September 2016 survey. We received a 25% response rate, so we even know that the impact here that we're going to tell you about is low. But Spotlight is averaging about being able to help law enforcement identify kids on average five kids a day, um, assisted in over 7,442 trafficking investigations, a total of 6,325 um, victims being identified, and close to 2,000 children, which again is, is our sweet spot. And then the adult victims, over 4,345. And then the traffickers, or the pimps, uh, 2,186. So it's pretty significant. So we talk about the, the technical approach to this. And if you look at what investigators were utilizing beforehand, you'll see on the left-hand side, um, there's date columns, and there's a whole bunch of phone numbers, and then you start seeing arrows. This is literally an investigator. What they would do, they would go on the back page, and they would start writing down things that they think might be related. This is not how you can tackle this problem at scale, right? Um, and then we know, from, based on our survey, for those law enforcement who are coming in on a daily basis, they're saving 60% of their investigation time because they have all of this information. We can show the relationships that are there. Um, so it's been a really significant time savings for, for law enforcement. And you won't probably read all of these, but we've, we've gotten a lot of feedback from law enforcement about the magnitude that it's been able to help from gathering intelligence, plotting their trends, and allocating resources when they're having um, investigations. Um, the second one is, it's pretty, um, I guess it's tough to read, um, but it shows you the impact that Spotlight was able to provide law enforcement with one of the only leads that they were able to have for a John who um, had raped a minor. So um, it has a huge impact. We're really proud of, of what we've built and, and where we've come from. And we're looking forward to continuing to build on how we can do um, similarity image searches. So if law enforcement has an image that they received from a parent, as an example, for a runaway, that we can hit it up on our, on, um, with our images. Um, so there's lots of different things that we think we can continue to do to help improve the efficiency and help identify people who are being trafficked. I have my business card here. If you're interested, you can feel free to take a picture of that. Um, because now Paul is going to come. And I think after we're both done, we'll be taking questions. So if you have questions, maybe write them down. Mm -hmm.